Do you believe that your worst enemy is yourself? Your body of flesh? Well, if you're born again, you do. If you've been saved for a while, you understand that your flesh is prone to wander, prone to leave the God I love, like the old hymn says. Um, you know, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. You know, uh, that hymn. Um, now, if you're saved, like I said, you'll, you'll understand that. But I recently had somebody in the comments um, claim to be Greek Orthodox, and he said that he doesn't believe that, that that's a Gnostic heresy of some kind, that, that, uh, that your body is evil and bad and whatever, and God made your body, and that your body is a wonderful thing. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost and, and whatever. Well, you're taking that verse out of context there. Um, yes, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost if you are saved, but that doesn't mean that your flesh is not corruptible. Your flesh is corruptible. I am living proof of that. Anybody who's saved is living proof of that. Um, I have gray hair here. I didn't in the past. I'm getting old. I have different pains now that weren't there in the past. Uh, and my pains were caused by my past. Um, my flesh is corruptible. When, I get, when you get saved, when the Lord saves you, what happens is your spirit is quickened. It becomes alive. It's, it's the Holy Spirit starts to communicate with your spirit. Your soul is redeemed, but your flesh remains the same. God doesn't do anything about your flesh. That's up to you. That's your job to put your flesh down, to cause your flesh to sing hymns and not music of the world, to cause your flesh to do right. That's your job. It is not... Uh, somehow meriting your salvation or something else, eternal salvation. And, and see, that's the whole problem with organized religion, like the Greek Orthodox system or the Roman Catholic system, or any of the other works-based things out there, Judaism or Islam, whatever else. And that is that they try to improve the flesh, try to make the flesh, we'll go to certain things and we'll do fasting and we'll do prayers and we'll kneel on, get on our knees and crawl up to the altar and you know it's all about sanctification of the flesh and there's no that's why they're self-righteous and um i started to write the notes for the study and uh and you know i just kind of got to the point i thought well there's really no point in me doing a study about the flesh being corrupt because all you really have to do is just go to the book of romans in the new testament and read chapter six through eight and you'll be convinced, if you have an open mind, that the flesh is corruptible. That there are major problems with the flesh. And there's a whole lot of other scriptures I could go to. I mean, I could do a big study on it. There's a big rock right here. Right there. I don't know what it's doing back here. It's kind of lonely all by itself. <laughs> uh, just kind of an interesting thing why that rock is right here. But <clears throat> I don't know. Just continuing to walk back through here to survey storm damage. But, uh, you know, if I, if I need to do a study, I can do a study. But uh, really, it's not that difficult of a thing. You don't really need a preacher to go through the Bible and find every reference to the issue of the flesh being corruptible. Um, it's very plain. The Apostle Paul struggled with his flesh. Uh, the good things that he knew that he should do, he wasn't doing those, and he was doing the corrupt things that he knew he wasn't supposed to do. Um, we can all relate to that. If, if you're saved, you say, yeah, I can, I can understand that. So um, let me know in the comments section down below if I should do a detailed study on the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Again, Galatians chapter 5, you can go there and you can read that. There's a war between the flesh and the spirit. Sorry about the sunlight there don't mean to be blinding anybody um so like i said let me know uh should i do an actual dedicated study on the thing or you know like i said you really can just do your own study it's not really that hard to understand how bad the flesh is but that's what these works salvationists they they uh 
struggle with that because they think to themselves, well, you know, I've been baptized into the church, cleaned up my dirty flesh, um, and I've been, I've, you know, tried to follow the catechism or the whatever they call it in the Greek Orthodox system. And uh, I do this, and I do that, and I do good community service and whatever else. Uh, that isn't going to save you. Jesus died on the cross to save sinners. Um, and you can be saved, and you can know that you are saved. And you can know that you have eternal life. It isn't something that you have to guess about. You know, I'm not really sure. I think, hopefully I think that we'll all make it to the same place. Well, if you believe that way, then you will all be making it to the same place, and that will be to the lake of fire for all of eternity. Um, not trying to be mean, that's just the way it is. It's what the Bible teaches. Um, if you're working to get someplace, you can only work to get to hell. You can't work to get to heaven. Jesus Christ did the work for you. More trees down. What a storm we had this winter. A lot of those trees uh, were, they had plans. <laughs> as much as a tree can plan anything, but the uh, tree had plans. And that, that plan was that uh, it was going to grow and get big and strong and nice and big. And the storm came and it blew the tree down. And great was the fall of it. Like a lot of people. Oh, you have plans. You're going to... You're a great person and, and you have a, a bright future ahead of you. And a storm comes up and knocks you down. And then you find yourself standing before God in your own self-righteousness. And uh, God's not impressed. And God says, depart from me, ye cursed and everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Uh, well, hold on, God. You don't know who I am. That's very clear. Uh, I'm a good person. No, you're not. Uh, Jesus died on the cross to uh, save sinners, not good people. So, but like I said, one more time, I'll say it again. Let me know what you think. Should I do a study on the issue of the sin uh, or the uh, flesh versus the spirit? What the Bible says about your flesh being corruptible? Put it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.